They are all beauties. This May, we headed to the Blackstone River Valley in Rhode Island to track down the most popular game fish on the planet. Carp might not be held in the same steam among anglers in the U.S. as they are in Europe, but that's beginning to change as American anglers discover European techniques for catching one of the biggest fish that swims in our fresh waters. I teamed up with on-the-water contributing writer and carp guru Dave Pickering who was more than happy to lead us on a gorgeous spring day to track down some monster carp. Dave was anxious to show us how to get started in a fishery that is both very accessible and extremely addicting. Well, Dave, we just got out here on the water. It looks like a beautiful pond. We're not gonna identify it. It probably doesn't even have a name. It's actually an overflow of the Blackstone River. When there's flooding, the water actually comes into the pond and fills it up. Uh, and, and this is what you've got. But this is a pond that, that's difficult to get to. It's way in the woods. It looks like it's in the woods of Maine, but uh, it's a great spot for carp. The carp that have been in here are sort of trapped in here, and uh, I'm gonna guess some of them have been in, in here 20, 30 years. We're fishing for carp today, big carp, hopefully, and we're gonna go ahead and bait. The story behind the baiting, why it's so important. Uh, what a lot of carp fishermen like to do is a pre-baiting campaign where they'll pre-bait for several days and then come and fish it. On the day I fish, I usually put in a small amount of bait. We don't want to overfeed them. I'm actually going to use this baiting spoon. Uh, this is the way most of us do it to uh, put the bait in here. Put just a little more out here near this island. One of the important things to do when fishing for carp is to reduce the amount of resistance because as Dave mentioned earlier, when these fish strike, it's a panic response, it's a flight response, and that's why the actual initial run is so intense. Uh, one of the ways to reduce our presence when the fish takes the bait is to keep the rod tip pointed straight at the water. So what we'll do is I'll position two bank sticks in this position or you can buy something called a session pod. The most important part of this is this front unit here. This is called a bite alarm. And all it does is picks up the line moving through it because we put very little to no resistance on the baits. So a slight hit on this will actually give you a little sound like this. And then a big hit will give you a long drawn out and that's going to be that response that's going to get us up out of our seat or away from where we are to come running over to get the rod. Uh, you do have a very short window of time to make that happen, so you want to be quick on it. We're finding out recently through a lot of studies in Europe that they really go for color. I've matched a lot of coloring in my baits. So you're going with the pattern there, the yellow, orange, yellow. And how many will you put on? Three pieces of supermarket sweet corn. And I'm going to put them on the hair rig. That just goes down the baiting needle. And this little piece of plastic is called a, a hair stop. And that's going to go into the loop I've got here. When a cop picks up the bait, they, they do this routine where they suck in the bait, blow it out. A hook then gets them right in the lip. They panic and go into a run, and the Europeans call that a bolt. When the line starts to go out, the fish is actually hooked. Unlike other ways that you fish, you don't have to pull to set the hook. It's already in them. This is one of the biggest tricks. They take this method mix, as I said, take a handful of this, just like that, and I'm gonna pack this around a sinker like and what's, what's keeping it together? All it is is a combination of oatmeal, cornmeal, and bread. With a little bit of water. Just and put that... enough water so that it's kind of sticky, like a snowball. What will happen is it hits the bottom, and this peels off, peels off, and it leaves a chum pile around your bait. And they come sniffing around, they start chewing this, they see your bait there, they pick up the bait. I know one of the things we're going to do, guys, is fish Ooh. on. we got to fish on. Here we go. Boy, that was right where you said we might pick one up there, huh? Right off that corner. That's awesome. And wow. gone. Oh, no, he's there. Right, no, he's right, there. He just right. came back. He just ran. Get your net, Eric. There he is. I just saw color on him. One of the things you can notice here is that Jack's never really taken it past 45. It's very short burst. He's never gay taking it up and then reeling down on it. Very, very subtle. You can see that the whole rod on the tip of it is moving no less than a foot. They will try to take you into structure, so a jack is pretty good at getting them out of this. That was awesome. 
Well, it's funny, Dave. You said this is going to be one of the first spots right in here, right off of this point. I'm going to leave the net in the water, and you're just going to bring it right to the net. Oh, this is a good fish, Jack. Oh, look at that, Jack, huh? You got him. You got him. Oh, 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 that's a big dude. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> Eric, can you lay my mat out? Yeah. That is gorgeous. And see how he got hooked in the lip? That was due to the hair rig. Every mirror cop is unique. If we come back here fishing, I've actually recaptured several of the fish, you know, and I identify them by pictures. And this is the way they do it in Europe. How hardy are these fish? They can breathe oxygen. They're incredibly hardy. Oh, so they're so the good. biggest okay. thing is that you don't take that slime coat off them. So that's why we use either these slings or the mat. I'm just going to pull this thing out. These hooks are so small, they come out very easily. A little rotation this way, then pull up on it. What do you figure? That thing's got to be... Uh, that's 20. 20 pounds in Rhode Island is considered a very big mirror. It's very adept to sucking up. You can see the lips on this thing. Yeah, he's going to I'm going to weigh it. Hopefully it's over 20, I'll Now, it. very important when you weigh these fish, do not put the scale in its gills. Much like you'd weigh a bass, you want to weigh this in a waist sling because you would actually break the gill and kill the fish. Let's see what we've got here. 21. That is a real good size fish. That's a beautiful fish. We haven't been here five minutes. We just picked up our first fish. 21 pounds, guys. Eric Jack, Dave Pickering, Chris Megan, hang with us. This is going to be a killing show. Although we're not going to kill anything, we're going to release everything very healthy. <laughs> so let's get this guy back in the water. I feel the weight getting somewhere here. There she goes. <laughs> <laughs> After catching and releasing a carp over 20 pounds, I was ready to learn more from Dave about the mirror carp fishery in the Blackstone River Valley. You notice I'm using a nine foot rod. This is actually a European cop rod that I'm using and they're rated by test curves and it actually has a, an even bend throughout. It's almost like a fly rod on steroids. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a soft cast and I'm going to throw this pretty far out. You know, I, I usually put one rod in close, this rod's in close, and I usually put one out far. So this one here is going to go out pretty far. And what we're trying to do is try, we're trying to pinpoint the places where the cop are, are hanging out if there's any big numbers. Okay, one of the things you were talking about is trying to locate where the car bar, that when you locate uh, a couple of carp, there may be a bunch of them in there? Yes and no. Sometimes there's individual fish that you find. Sometimes, you know, they're swimming around in groups of, I don't know, five, ten fish. So it just depends. A little pond like this, I'm going to guess, has a population of between 100 and 150 carp. Wow. That many. So it's a matter of, you know, just scouting finding around that, yeah, and finding and them. Doing the homework. Yeah. I noticed we're fishing with bait runners. Very important as far as when these fish pick up the bait and right. then take off. Now the key here is when you, when you pick up the rod, the bait runner here is on free spool. If I get a hit, what I'm going to do as it's running, I'm going to pick this up and I'm just going to turn the handle. I'm not going to give it a big pull. You want to play these fish soft. When it's running, the fish is hooked. Yeah, I saw that. The other big draw to this fishery is the extreme accessibility to it. Yes, there's a small investment up front with getting some of the gear, but once you've done that, I mean, you can pick up a bait at your local CVS that's 24 hours, or your local shopping center that has any kind of corn, or what we call a particle bait, which is a corn, a bean, things of that nature. All throughout New England, they're very accessible game fish. Most city parks, some of the most urban areas you can imagine, are loaded with these fish. So, Put a little bit of time in, get involved in the community, and it's a fishery that is right there at your fingertips that you otherwise might not have ever tried. Chris, 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 it's funny, you hear people refer to them as a trash fish or something that's not a game fish. I mean, I value them more than any freshwater fish I've encountered. Uh, just keep the rod you know, up my, high, Chris. Um, are you right there, 45, or you want it higher than that? And just pump them slowly. Yeah, we'll take care of the lines and move the lines if he goes under them. 
Whoa. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, just broke. Huh? All yeah, right. This last 10 feet is where you blow it. I'm going to try. Just keep it tight and let I'm it. I'm going underneath it. you now. Do -si -do. Little dance. Kind of reminds you of offshore fishing, Jack, huh? Yeah, it does. I mean, Whole lot of was... nothing, and all of a sudden it's just game on. This is very different than the other one. This is going to be a fully scaled mirror. They're real wide, you know, they're very heavy for their size. I mean, if you ever caught one 35, 40 That's inches, simple. they're monsters. Now, do you ever have these fish come up and breach? Oh, uh, are they hooked? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I've had them do it on a strike, I've had them do it fighting. I'm going to try to walk him in right now. You want to just walk him into the net. Yeah. I'm not going to stab for him. You just want to walk him right in. Got him. Once I turn his head and I have him moving this way, we'll walk him right in. Oh, this dear. guy is not giving up. All right. As soon as I turn his head this way. As soon as he has a yep. beautiful orange fin, too. Yeah. Like you said, he ain't over. Not yet. Too deep. Yep. One more. One more turn. Don't rush it. This Not is going to. Blowing. So painful to lose him there. He's coming now. You got him. Got him. Here we go, Dave. Huh? Oh. <laughs> yeah. See how different yeah. that one is? <laughs> Look at this one. On that. Yeah, that's what they call a fully scaled mirror. Guys, carp fishing here in Rhode Island. A little overflow of the Blackstone River. I imagine there's got to be tons of these up and down the river itself where uh, you get a big, uh, heavy rain. Rain overflows. This is our second fish. We haven't been here half an hour. Look at some of the size of some of these scales in here. Lead you to believe that it's a much more mature fish than the 12 pounds indicates. Uh, the orange and the pigment in the fins is really cool. Let's get this guy weighed. Let's get him uh, a couple of yep. shots. We'll get him back in the water, guys. Okay. Slightly over 11 pounds. So I just doubled my personal best carp right there. And that was the one I was a kid. Yeah. Jack's fish would have uh, quadrupled with my biggest <laughs> fish there. And uh, I understand you caught one in the last week or yesterday. That yesterday, was, 40 pounds. That's got to be as well, close to the state record. Uh, it was actually caught in mass. So it would, the mass record is 46, but that was, that was a 40 pounder. And there are very few 40 pounders caught in New England, but there, there's probably a few a year. But I think I had told you in the month of May so far, that is the biggest fish in North America right now. That's amazing, yeah. huh? Yeah. Dave Pickering, the cop master himself. <laughs> He's told us where these fish have been and they've been there the whole time. Guys, we just picked up another beautiful mirror carp, this guy with a full pattern. We're going to get him in the water. When you come back, hopefully you'll be hearing that alarm again. Well, one of the things that you said on the way in, you said, wait until you see this place. You'll think you're out somewhere in, in deep Maine, right. and you hit the nail on the head. Just sitting in here is so serene. I know with Jack and I, when we went to sprint over on this side, there were deer tracks all over the water there. Well, when I'm here alone, I see wild turkeys. Uh, I see, uh, you know, hawks flying around, deer in the woods in back of me. It's very relaxing compared to other types of fishing, you know, more exciting, and you're always on the go. But you're not in this type of fishing. One thing I love about this fishery, it kind of reminds me a little bit, and I know it's completely different uh, a season, but ice fishing, it's a very social fishery I found. What's really cool is you can set your spread out there and, and you can just kind of enjoy it until you hear that alarm. It also reminds me though of offshore fishing where you kind of, when that alarm goes off, it's, it's chaos, but other than that- Controlled chaos. It's controlled yeah. chaos, but yeah. other than that, it's very relaxing. But Dave, you were saying that sometimes you guys will have tournaments where you're kind of spaced out around the entire pond, you can see each other. Yeah, I run the, uh, the Rhode Island Cop Group, and we have a lot of these fish-ins where we, we get together, and, uh, and guys will fish all around the pond, and you know, when somebody catches one, everybody will run over and cheer them on, and uh, you know, it's kind of a fun thing, and it's a social thing. I could see where this would be addicting, and I have to tell you, I had a kind of a preconceived notion of what carp fishing was gonna be like, and you can take that and throw it out the window. <laughs> I can see where this can be so addicting have potential right now to catch a 30 pound fish here. That, that, that just blows that me away. 30 pounds in this little pond is possible. Gotta go. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Which one was it? Low light on, Dave. That one there, the light is on. There you go, that's the one it was, yeah. <laughs> the long rod. <laughs> go, 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 go. Oh, 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 oh. He's on. 
you. So whenever they turn, if they head into structure or they're heading a direction you don't want them to do, you actually agree with them with the rod. And by pulling them in the direction they're already swimming, they'll immediately turn out the opposite direction. Oh, Remember, we got to okay, it's the exact opposite of the steelhead. Exactly. With the steelhead, Polar if they're opposite. going that way, I go the opposite way. Right. And right. The steelhead will turn and just say. Yeah, they'll they'll turn. They, they don't with want the pressure. The right. Yep. They're gonna go because they got current against them a lot of times. But these guys have that open water. Well, we just had a fish. Jack and I made a big run to get over here, and uh, it was gone. We threw it right back out in there, and this fish came right back. He's working right along the bank in here. He's just cruising along. Here he is, I got color on him. Nice fish, beautiful fish. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. Oh. Bring the rod tip to my head. Yeah, there you go. This is a big fish. Like you fish. said, the last 10 feet is where the end game sometimes turns ugly. It's like the spin under the boat. Yeah, spinning. that's exactly it. Yeah, the critical point here is, is the netting because it's gonna bolt several times. When I tell you, this, this is near record territory. Oh, wow. oh, oh my <laughs> god. Oh, 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 that's a big one. That is a that beautiful is fish. That's a big carp. Jack, we had a little bit of a take there. We sprinted over here about 70, 80 yards. Look at the size of that fish. Jack, is that oh. thing awesome? He's heavy. Look at that. Look at this. Wow. Yeah. That's all. Oh my yeah. lord. Huh? That's, a, that's actually a spawned out female. Yeah, See how all the eggs all, are out. All the eggs are out. You're getting robbed on weight. Easily four pounds. I saw the tail first when it came up and I'm like, oh that's my an god. Old fish. Look at the power in that tail when that thing sweeps and it's not even open. Hand next to it, yeah. Look at that thing when it opens up, Dave. Huh? Well, they have the weight behind them and they have the power. This fin and the dorsal fin have spines on the back of them. Fish that have been caught several times will actually get a, these funky little cuts here and actually cut your line. Okay, here we go. All day over 20. 18 and change. Oh, oh no way. Oh, you, you know, know why? why? It's, so, it's so long. Be because okay. it's long and skinny. Well, Jack, that was the third carp we've caught. We haven't been in here that long. It's funny, because Dave Pickling said 20 feet off that bank. We threw it 20 feet off that bank. And uh, we had one tied in a little earlier, but that guy popped off on the stick. And, you set it right back out. You went a little further out on this one. I yeah. figured that, you know, that fish may have moved a little bit. Yeah, took a little bit of the meth. I casted it back out without any method on it. It's just picked it up. Let's get this guy back in the water. Hang with us, guys. This guy's going to take off. Hopefully, we'll get to show you at home. They take off. When they're ready to go, it's a bullet. It's very hard. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Jack. Huh? Nice going. Thank job. you very much, man. Dave, Thank man. <laughs> Killing it, Dave. Killing it. The Blackstone River flows nearly 50 miles through Massachusetts and Rhode Island, and its watershed includes thousands of acres of ponds, lakes, and reservoirs. The river is considered one of the birthplaces of the American Industrial Revolution, earning the nickname America's Hardest Working River. Unfortunately, during America's industrial boom, many rivers like the Blackstone suffered heavy pollution from the factories and textile mills. In the 1990s, cleanup efforts began to revitalize this important waterway. In recent years, the Blackstone River has undergone a major ecological restoration due to the efforts of the Blackstone River Coalition. Prior to 1970, only white suckers and carp could survive in the river. Today, there are 19 species found in the river and close to 40 throughout the watershed, and the Blackstone River has become a popular waterway for outdoor recreation, including bird watching, hiking, canoeing, kayaking, and fishing. Dave, I know that carp fishing can be extremely unique. For the folks at home, walk them through what line are we using right now. I know we've had some really nice fish. We've got one up to 21 pounds today, so the line is very important. Okay. Well, the line I'm using here, I'm actually using 15 pound test uh, monofilament. And I like monofilament as opposed to braided line because I like the stretch and the soft, the soft yeah. feel and the forgiveness. And the cop don't seem to be too line shy? No, no, not line shy at all. You know, they're looking for the bait. If they're hungry, they're gonna take it. What is a factor, my leader is here, in, and in cop fishing, we call this the hook link. And this is made with 50 pound test uh, braided line. You want this four to six inches. The reason why we want it short, in a little while I'm gonna pack that oatmeal ball around my sinker, yep. that's the method. If the leader were real long, it would be too far away from the bait. You want that around the sinker so that your, your bait on the hook is very close by. 
And I noticed the hook now, very small hook, considering the size of the fish right. we're catching. Standard, most, most carp fishermen around the country are using a size six hook. And it's a short shank hook, as you can see yeah. here. A six or an eight is standard in carp okay. fishing. This one here is actually a six. With the bite slowing down in the afternoon, the crew decided to hike in and scout for a new location. We made a move from where we were, and a uh, little tight quarters in here, but uh, shot back to the truck to get some water, and on the way out, I noticed on one of these little offshoots of the Blackstone River, some real nice carp just kind of almost sunning themselves on the surface. There was about four or five of them. They were anywhere in that six to, to uh, geez, I saw one close to that 12 pound, but these were all in that six, eight pound uh, class. I think Jack's already got one line set up. Let's see if we can't sneak another one out there. That was committed. I wonder if they, you know, they pick up the weight, take a yeah. big chunk out of it. They pick up that method ball a lot. That's, That's definitely a fish. No, he's, no, he's on. He's, he's on. on. He's, I saw him cruising back. Can somebody put the uh, that net together? You want me to clear that line? Yeah. I got it. Hold on. Let me get this out of the way. I got it. Hang on. I'm not sure how he's got it yet. This is going to be really interesting here, Jack. Chris, I'm going to get him with this one. Easier to do with this one, so you don't have to climb down the bank. This is gonna be interesting the way he has it on him. Look at that. Put him right at the net and I'm just gonna lift it. He's a little bigger than I thought he was. Yeah, so I'm he giving was. him a little bit of a break here. You're clean on this one. I hate when they turn like that. I don't know how much longer I can hold him here without him popping it, guys. I'm hoping that wasn't a mistake. All right, get him in there, we're good. <laughs> Jack, that's awesome. Right over here. Yeah. Jack, he's got some shoulders on him. Little. Yeah, it's uh, bigger than I thought it would be. I saw a couple other much smaller than that on his, on the top over here. So, Look at the net. I love that, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah good teamwork, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good teamwork. Yeah, Dave. Well, guys, we mixed things up this afternoon. We came down here, a little offshoot of the Blackstone River. We noticed as I shot out to the, uh, to the truck to get some water on this hot day, some of these guys almost sunning themselves up on the surface. And uh, so we got about an eight foot drop to the bank, Jack, really nice fish. And Dave, nice assist getting them up. I didn't know how we were gonna get down there on that. Oh, we're used to doing that. <laughs> Beautiful fish, Jack. We gotta get this guy back in the water. Had a great day out here, Dave Pickering, Chris Megan, Jack Sprangle, and uh, Eric's out there somewhere. Hey, there he is. <laughs> guys, if you'd like to learn more about today's show, log on to onthewater.com from the entire crew at OTW and the cop master himself, Dave Pickering. Thanks for tuning in.